Well, hello everyone, Tristan Fenholt here, and I wanna thank each and every one of you for uh, being a part of watching and receiving the uh, daily messages that are coming forth. And I wanna encourage you, if there's any uh, daily messages that you've missed, uh, catch up on those. You can go to YouTube, uh, search Jerry Dearman, and when you find the channel for Jerry Dearman, there's a playlist called uh, Daily Messages. Go ahead and click that playlist and you'll see uh, where all these daily messages are found and kept there. So uh, if you've missed any, I want to encourage you, go back and, and watch those. And also, if there's a particular daily message that really impacted you, you may want to go back onto YouTube and uh, check out Jerry Dearman's channel and watch them again. We can't get enough of God's Word. And every time uh, God's Word is opened up and shared or preached or read, God speaks. So uh, you may hear something different from the Lord when you tune into it. So I want to encourage you all to do that. Now, I'm excited to uh, bring this message to you. I believe it is a message that is dear to the heart of God. And I believe it's also something that's very important to you as well. That's why you're watching these things. I want to talk to you about entering into God's presence. Entering into God's presence. And I believe this is going to be part one of a four-part mini-series. So uh, you can watch the following messages uh, live on this same day each week. So uh, tune in next week and the week after and the week after. And I believe I'll be done in about four weeks here, but I really want to talk to you about entering into God's presence. And I want to lay a quick foundation really quick about what we mean when we say God's presence. And I really want to give you three layers to God's presence as we begin. Uh, the first layer I want to talk about is what I call God's pervading presence. God's pervading presence. Uh, it's what the Bible calls His omnipresence. It means God is everywhere all at the same time. Listen to Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10 from the Good News Bible. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there. <laughs> What's this verse saying? God is everywhere. So when we're talking about God's presence, we need to start with His pervading presence, His omnipresence. God is everywhere all at the same time. There is nowhere that you live where God's presence isn't there. God is everywhere. It's what we call omnipresence. I'm calling it the pervading presence because all three of these start with a P, okay? I just thought that would be something that might uh, just be a little easy to remember. His pervading presence. Listen, whether one is saved or not, born again or not, call themselves a Christian or not, wherever you live, God is present. He is everywhere. He sees all things. And this is true for believers and unbelievers. He's everywhere. But listen to this. Just because God is everywhere, and this is the point, doesn't mean we engage with His presence. Doesn't mean we enter into His presence. You know, I want you to think about going to a grocery store, for example. There's a lot of people that are in the grocery store, but you have no idea who so-and-so is, or who that person is, or who this person may be. You have no idea. You don't know their name. You don't know anything about them, but they're present. They're there. But you may acknowledge them in the sense that, hey, let me get out of your way if you're trying to pass me, <laughs> right? But we don't engage with everybody just because someone is present doesn't mean we engage with him and listen. God is everywhere all at the same time. His presence is everywhere, but the majority of people don't even acknowledge him. They don't even believe he's real. And they therefore don't enter into his presence. They don't engage with his presence. So just because uh, God is everywhere doesn't mean that every person engages with God or has a personal relationship with him. So that's the first layer, God's pervading presence. Here's the second layer. I don't know if these are really called layers, but just the second uh, uh layer, I guess I'm just going to keep saying, of God's presence is what I call God's powerful presence. 
or what some may call his manifest presence. It's when God shows up in a profound way and you are fully aware of his presence. Oftentimes, God demonstrates his power, uh, which is why I call it the powerful presence. See, when God's manifest presence shows up, man, things happen, healings take place, miracles are going on, and there's a there's a really a tangible element to the presence of God. Uh, for example, Paul and Silas, you know, when they were in prison, they began singing hymns to God, and we know God's everywhere, but as they engaged into his presence, his powerful presence showed up, and their chains came loose, the doors opened up, isn't that right? Because God's powerful presence was there. See, they tapped into his presence, and they tapped into his powerful presence. You know, the Bible says in Luke 5, 17, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Notice, the power of the Lord was present to heal. See, listen, many times God's power is present, but we don't engage with his presence or we don't engage with his power. Therefore, we don't see it. We don't, we don't see it. So just because God is everywhere with us personally does not mean we tap into his presence and tap into his power. And here's the third real quick, God's personal presence. And I love this one. This one's very relational. God's personal presence. Some may call it his abiding presence. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can boldly say the Lord is my helper. See, the Lord's saying, I will not leave you nor forsake you. It's his personal presence. See, it's another layer than just being at the grocery store and there's a stranger. This is, you, you bring Jesus home with you. You have a relationship with the Lord. Now listen, just because you, uh, and many people give their life to the Lord, and that's, that's how, when his abiding presence is with you. You invite him into your life. And so, yes, he's everywhere all at once, but there's this now personal presence that we can open up our life to and receive. But here's, here's what I want you to catch. Just because God has a personal presence among you, and what some would say his abiding presence with us, that still doesn't mean we engage with his presence. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm married, some of you are married, and my wife could be in my home and she's personally present with me. She could even be sitting on the couch with me, but that doesn't mean I'm engaging with her in a personal way. We could be watching the TV, I could be reading a book, you know, uh, she could be taking care of, you know, something else, whether it's online or taking work calls. And just because she is present with me in a real personal way doesn't mean I engage with her. Same thing with our kids. My kid, I have two, two young boys. They can be running around. They can even be all around me, right? But I could be focused on other things and not engaging with their presence. And listen, yes, God is with us. Yes, he will never leave us nor forsake us. But many times he's like that person that's sitting on the couch, that he's with us, but we don't engage with him. We don't talk with him. There's no intimate conversation and fellowship. And that's what it is I really want to talk to you about today is entering into God's presence. See, he has a pervading presence. His power is present. And he's personally present. He's personally with us but we need to enter into his presence. And so I wanna give you over the next three weeks, three very practical ways that we can engage with God in a very real, personal way, very practical way where we can enter into his presence and have fellowship with our living God. And so I want to encourage you, watch these next number of subsequent weeks. But here's where I want to leave us today. I want to leave you with the benefits of entering into God's presence. You see, there's benefits to entering into God's presence. Listen to some of these precious promise, promises and benefits to spending, with spending time in the presence of God. Here's, here's number one. Times of refreshing come from the presence of God. Times of refreshing come 
from the presence of God. Acts 3.19 says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Listen, that's a benefit to entering into the presence of the Lord, is times of refreshing. You know, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I want more times of refreshing, especially in this day and age. There's a lot of bad news out there. And we can get so bogged down with negativity or uh, burdens and workload and, and stress and you know all these things that come at us. The Bible says times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. We will get refreshed in the presence of the Lord. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29, Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What's that mean? There's rest in the presence of God. See, that's those times of refreshing. Here's a second benefit. He gives power to the weak and increases strength. He gives power to the weak and increases strength. If you feel like you're exhausted, you just can't carry on anymore, you just feel weak, in, in certain areas. Listen, when you enter into his presence, he gives power to the weak and increases strength. That's found in Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Listen, to those who have no might, he increases strength. Some of you right now, as you enter into the presence of God, he's going to increase your strength. <laughs> Praise God. Receive strength in the presence of God. Number three, here's a third benefit. He restores our soul. He restores our soul. Psalm 23, 3. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, it's the first verse. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. See, He does it. He does it. He will restore our souls. What's that mean? Anxiety, depression, um, any type of uh, anger or hurt or offense. He'll restore all those hurts on the inside. That's a, pre that's a benefit to being in the presence of God. Here's a fourth benefit. In His presence is fullness of joy. <laughs> I like that one. In His presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Is fullness of joy. Do you know how much more joy we would have if we would enter into the presence of God? <laughs> you know, there's so much concern that people have or worry that people have. And when you enter into the presence of God, you can't help but encounter the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Isn't that right? So enter into his presence and experience joy. Listen to what the verse goes on to say, which leads me to the fifth benefit that I want to highlight today. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. What's that mean? Here's number five. In his presence is life, and it includes pleasant things. Pleasures. You know, sometimes that word pleasures has a negative connotation, like it's always sinful pleasures. But that's not true. That's not true. God created pleasure. He wants you to enjoy life. And in his presence, guess what? You're going to have a life that's filled with pleasure. Good things. Not sinful pleasure, of course. But God wants you to enjoy life. And at his right hand are those things to enjoy in life. Here's number six. Gladness comes from the presence of God. Gladness comes from the presence of God. Psalm 21, six says, for you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. You have made him exceedingly glad. So there's that joy, but now there's glad. Man, I'm glad, I'm having a good day. There's reason to rejoice. Gladness comes in the presence of God. Number seven, healing comes in the presence of God. Healing comes in the presence of God. You'll find that in Malachi chapter four, verse two, when he, there's healing in his wings. So when God shows up and you're in his presence, guess what? Healing, in fact, that previous verse I opened up with, with God's powerful presence, the power of God was present to heal. So healing comes in the presence of God. Some of us need to receive healing and we'll get it when we enter into the presence of God. Here's number eight. Blessings come from the presence of the Lord. Blessings come from the presence of the Lord. You can find that in 2 Samuel 6, 11 and Psalm 84, 4. Blessings come from the presence of God. <laughs> we'll live a blessed life in his presence. 
Here's number nine. Here's the last one I want to highlight today. Peace comes from the presence of the Lord. Peace. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. What's that mean? When the Lord is with us, then he'll come with his peace. He'll give us peace. The Lord be with us. See, we live in turbulent times right now where there's people that aren't experiencing joy and gladness and enjoying life with the pleasures of of life. Good things, good pleasures. The blessing of the Lord and healing and and, uh, rest for their souls and restoring their souls and, and times of refreshing and all those things that we touched on. But listen, it's available to us. It's like prescription medicine. I'm not relating God to medicine specifically, but listen, when you enter into the presence of God, he's got a prescription for every one of life's needs. And when we come into his presence, we'll experience all those things that come with him. And I want to close with, with, these, with this thought. The Bible says this. Well, it's not a thought. It's what the Bible says. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Listen, God is everywhere. And if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, he's with you. But we need to engage with God. Just like when I want to engage with my wife, if I'll draw near to my wife, you know what I'll, what I'll find? She'll draw near to me. And guess what? It works in reverse as well. When she draws near to me, (laughs) what's that mean? I want to draw near to her. And listen, God has already drawn near to us. He sent his son Jesus to this earth as a physical human being. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose from the dead. And when he went to heaven, he gave us the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, who also is God, who is with us and is in us. And when we give our life to Jesus, we're born again. We receive the Holy Spirit. So not only is God with us, he's in us. But so many Christians don't engage with the presence of God. So he has drawn near to us. He is even speaking right now in this message and these other messages that have come forth. And when you read your Bible, God's speaking, he's drawing near. He wants us to draw near to him as well. Hebrews 10.22 says, let us draw near with a true heart. So... How shall we draw near? With a true heart. Let's draw near with a heart after God. With a heart after God. So Father, I thank you so much for your presence. That you are everywhere. You have a pervading presence. You're omnipresent. You are everywhere all at the same time. And Lord, there are so many people who don't acknowledge your presence. They don't even know who you are, but yet you're present. You're there. Lord, and then you're also, your power is present. And so many times you want to move mightily in our midst. You want to bring healing. You want to bring your power into our lives. But we just don't engage with your presence. And so your power is present to heal. But just like what happened in, in the gospel account, that only one person tapped into the power to receive healing. May we, your people who hear your voice, who know your presence, tap into your power and see the miraculous take place because we enter into your presence. And Lord, I thank you for your personal presence. Now, when we make Jesus the Lord of our life, that you are with us, you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit who's not only with us, but in us. You are so near to us. But Lord, may we not be believers that yes, you're with us, but we don't have a relationship or fellowship with you where we're communing with you. So I pray, Lord, that we will engage with your presence. So we draw near right now with a true heart, right where you're at. Just tell the Lord, I'm drawn near with, with my heart. See, my wife, she doesn't want me just drawing near with my, my words, though words is a way to draw near, of course, and affection, of course. But listen, words and even affection without the heart really is, is, it mean, is, is meaningless. It doesn't have that love. See, the Lord is love and he wants our hearts. Why? Because he wants our love and he loves us. So let's tell the Lord right now, Lord, I give you my heart. I love you. Let's draw near to God so we draw near to you, God. And as we draw near to you, I thank you, you will draw near to us. We choose this day to value your presence and to engage with you on a personal level. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Hey, just want to encourage you, this same day next week live, uh, you can uh, follow with me the three very practical ways that we enter into God's presence. And um, let me just tell you what the first one's going to be, entering God's presence through the Word. So join me next week live. Um, and if you're watching this on demand, you can go to YouTube, uh, look up Jerry Dearman, grab the playlist on there and uh, find these messages on there, okay? Don't miss out on this. We're gonna enter into God's presence. We're gonna tap into his presence and his power and we're going to walk in the benefits that come with his presence. I love you, God bless you. Hey, thanks for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And by the way, if you're interested in starting a house church, whether under The Rock, a four square church, or under Solid Lives, our global discipleship ministry, then go to one of those websites and hit House Churches. Go to therock.com for The Rock and solidlives.com for Solid Lives. We'd love to partner with you to start a house church and to advance the kingdom of God together.